everybody, Susie here. I am hopping on today with another fun rock painting tutorial for you. Um, if you follow along on Facebook with Rock Painting 101, you know that we have a monthly theme. So the month of June's theme is Animal Rocks. And so today I've got a sloth rock tutorial for you. Hang in there, perfect little phrase for a sloth. And he's super cute. Very easy for beginners to do. Just follow along with the tutorial. I'm doing it step by step for you. Now, when you watch the tutorial, if there is another animal rock you would like me to try to fit on the schedule, leave it in the comments below. I'm kind of making a little bit of a list. The more that the specific rock is asked for, I'll kind of bump it up the list a little bit. Um, and also, if you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure that you subscribe to Rock Painting 101 here on YouTube and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy. The rock painting. Got a little sloth that's gonna be with the phrase hang in there. So sloths are super cute. They're kind of all over the place right now. Um, so that's what we're gonna go with. Now I am gonna use my pens today. You can definitely do this with acrylics. It might actually be easier to do with some acrylics because um, I'm gonna have to be mixing and matching a little bit of my uh, pens to get the colors that I want. So. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, most of the pens I'm using today, real quick, are 3M for the colors. I do have one 5M just because it will help me color in faster, but that's not necessary. And then I also have my 1M black for lining and white just to do a last highlight. Again, acrylics and brushes will work just fine for this as well. So the first thing we have to do is place a branch for our sloth to be hanging out on. Like I said, I wanted to say hang in there at the top, so we're gonna give ourselves space for that. And I am gonna have the branch come all the way from the side of my rock. So we're just gonna go straight across like so, give it an end spot and all the way back. I'm gonna fill this in with brown first. And then I'm gonna come in, cause my sloth, I'm actually gonna make this brown color and we want it to separate a little bit from the branch. So I'm gonna come in with my black and I'm just gonna add a couple little stripes in here with my brown. This will also give it more of a barky look. All right, like that, doodle off the tip. I don't know if you can see that on the side. Now we're gonna go right back with our brown, right on top of that and kind of just do some striping. That way when it's all said and done, it will kind of have a little bit of a darker look than like our hands that are gonna be hanging on to this branch. There we go. Just like so. All right, doodle off the tip of that black off to the side. Now we're also gonna add just a couple little leaves on this, just for fun. Give that just a little bit of time to dry. This is gonna be more my style, I know. I'm supposed to be going outside of my style a little bit, you know, this month, but it's been a crazy month, so I haven't gotten a lot of time to practice anything far from my fun cartoon style that I like to uh, paint in. So um, we want this to dry just a little bit more before we get our hands on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and write hang in there now while we're giving this some time to dry. So, just gonna use regular old handwriting. Nothing super special, but I'm just bouncing around my rock so that things have time to dry. So hang in there. Okay. Now we're gonna to start to build our sloth. So the first thing I wanna do is kind of block out the shapes of my sloth so you know like the placement of where he's gonna land. So I'm just gonna do a big side kind of slanted oval. It's not, not completely on its side it's for how big we want the head to be. I'm not even gonna fill that in all the way yet. Okay, now for their bodies, they're, they basically don't really have a big neck because just the way that they kind of hang. So it's gonna droop down and it's gonna go straight into the back leg, which is gonna go up and it's hanging on to our branch. So it's gonna kind of go up and over and we're gonna line this too so you'll see a separation, but up and over the back side of that branch and then back down like so. And then his front arm is just gonna be on the other side of his head. Not a big, huge separation, just a little bit there. 
and the front arm's gonna go up here and grab a hold of that branch as well. So go a little bit past the branch and back down. And then we're gonna finish his body off like that. Now he's gonna have another leg and another arm back behind there. So to do that, we're just gonna have it grabbing on one side here, just a little, and then we're gonna show the line back behind here. And when we do our lining, you'll be able to see that, our outline. Same thing here, just a half oval sticking over the edge, and then a line back down to the body. So we've got our basic shapes on here. Now before we go filling in everything, I am going to use like a lighter shade around his eyes, because they have kind of almost like a raccoon, it's not, it reminds me of a raccoon, like they have the lighter coloring around their eyes. So I am gonna kind of avoid those areas just so I don't have to go over my darker brown. So we're kinda gonna do our mouth and nose area, a little bit of space in between, and kind of a, a dip down in the center. And I'll have to go over a little bit of my brown. They also have these fun little, almost like a little faux hawk on their heads. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that in. I'm gonna fill in the rest of the body here with my brown. And again, I'm using my bigger brown, but if you don't have it, you can easily do this with the smaller one if you've just got that smaller pack. Here we go. Like that. Okay, now for our back arms, just to kind of help them sit back just a little bit. We do want that to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna place a couple lines of black in there first. And while it's wet, I'm gonna go in with my brown, just to kind of give it a shadow in there, just a little bit. And then when we do our lining, you'll be able to see it a little bit more too but it just pushes them back just a little bit. Make sure you doodle off the tip of your brown. You don't want it to be dark when you go to use it the next time. So while I still know my lines of my legs, when the rest of this body is drying, I'm gonna go in and do the lining on these legs, just because it's easier when it's fresh in your mind. So very light touch with your 1M pen. I always say the paint wants to be on the rock. You don't have to press super duper hard to get it on there, and that way you, you have less chances of having splatter happen, okay? And then we've got our tree trunk that's going this way, like that. Okay, and then we've got our little hand sticking over the edge there, tree trunk, and the other side of the leg. And it's just easier to do that while it's still fresh in your head where all those lines are, okay? So, I actually messed this up just a little bit because look at I've got his leg all the way into this leg so his paw should be all the way next to that paw so I can just easily go in and go ahead and put brown back on there I'll let that dry and then I'll fix that because basically his paws are next to each other like that and there we go and we're gonna do the same thing over here do our oval on the top of the branch like so the other leg coming down And then fill in that other leg. And then this body's gonna cut off that leg just a smidge like that. And then it's gonna go up around the head. Okay, so now we've got our legs. And this branch needs to cut like this. There we go. The branch would be right there. So now he's literally hanging on now. So that works. And I, I'm seeing your comments, guys. I just can't <laughs> read them with this angle. But hopefully you're seeing what I'm doing a little bit better. I can always read comments and answer questions later. Okay. So now that this part of the body is a little bit more dry, we're going to go in and add in our eyes. So I've kind of got this like light peachy color here. And I'm going to have it come all the way from the side and up and in and then back down. It's almost like a mask. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, and just slanting down, so. You might have to play with your shape just a little bit to get them even, and then we'll line it with the um, brown and see 
how it looks. We'll let that layer dry. We're gonna go in with our brown and kind of outline it and see if we like the shape of that. You guys, I don't know if you can hear that, but I must have like a loose screw on my table and it's like, it's almost like squeaking. <laughs> kind of weird okay now to separate your head from body we're going to kind of do the same thing we did with um, the back side of the legs here so we are going to line the bottom of the head here and then we're going to go like this and just add just like a few little flecks of black there and then i'm going to go right in while it's still wet with my brown and kind of pull that into my color just a little bit and it's not gonna be a lot, it's just enough to kind of make that space just a little bit darker and then you can kind of pull that right in. You might not even be able to see, oh, I put the lid on the wrong one. You might not even be able to see it that much on the camera, but it's just enough to kind of make some separation. And we're gonna give ourselves a lining up here where that layer's drying, that little bit of hair there, around the edge of his head here. Okay, and we'll go along the back side of his body. And if you want, you can add a couple little fur lines on the back side, like so. Just as simple as that. You can kind of just let it kind of get a little rough on that edge. You could even do that on the belly area here. Just little indents here and there it can give more of a fur look to it without having to hand draw a little fur because that's tough. Okay, so we need our little nose here. We're going to give him just a friendly little smile. And now that this is dry, I still want to do a second coat on here just because I can still see the rock just a little bit through. So I'm going to do a second coat. We still have to line our tree anyways. By the time we're done right lining all that tree stuff, it should be okay. Okay, so let's get the rest of these leaves lined. There we go. And you can even go in there and add a couple lines of texture to your tree if you want to. Just kind of hold it on its side. If your rock has any texture to it at all, it will kind of bounce along it and it kind of actually can give you a natural bark look to it. All right, now we're gonna give him his eyes. Now, the thing with sloths is they always look tired, so instead of doing the normal circle eyes, I'm gonna do more of like a, a wide shape, which will kind of give him more of that tired look. And I'm trying to decide if I wanna line, I think I wanna line around that not a hundred percent just to give it some more definition there we go all right i'm gonna put a little highlight in his eyes missed a little spot there with my brown but he is about finished as soon as I get that little highlight in the eye. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Let me know in the comments if there's a specific animal that you would like me to try to do um, before the end of animal month is over. I'll probably be sneaking in with at least one more. So just leave them down below. Obviously I won't be able to get to all of them this month, but maybe I can work my way through them over the next couple months as well. We're gonna go in there and add our little white highlight just like that and we're gonna call them done so if you enjoyed the tutorial make sure to give it a thumbs up feel free to share and we'll see you guys soon with more rock painting tutorials bye bye